Hi guys, it's me, Carib. Thank you so much for tuning in. So, I recently had a baby like 19 days ago, and I have been posting a little bit more on Instagram than I have been anywhere else on social media. As a matter of fact, I haven't posted anything on Facebook, and that's really for personal reasons. Um, my Instagram family has been very supportive. There were messages with a lot of care and concern, words of affirmation, people reaching out and saying, hey, we're thinking about you. Um, followers sharing their stories with um, preterm labor, abrupt ends to the, their pregnancy, having a baby in you and all of that. And it is so nice when you feel like you're reaching out to people who can relate to your personal story. So as the video title suggests, I'm going to be talking about my experience as a NICU mom so far. Amara has been in NICU for almost three weeks. Um, it will be three weeks exactly in two days. And a lot has happened. A lot, of, a lot has changed for me in my personal life, um, in my mind, and just how I go about dealing with things on a daily basis. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I also have a three-year-old. And y'all, it's not easy to <laughs> juggle life between home and NICU. And a lot of people have been reaching out with really personal questions like, do I get to go to NICU every day and things like that? I don't want to answer those questions. I don't want to be judged for things that I do or things that I don't do. Um, I'm very cautious with that at this point in time because I feel like sometimes... People ask questions just to satisfy their curiosity, but I'm also polite. So if you do ask a question, I am going to answer. It may not be what you want or what you expect, but I'm going to answer um, in a way that protects me and my family, but also um, gives some sort of transparency because I try to do that on my social media platform. Being a Nikki mom is not easy at all. You know, as I said, it's really a struggle for me to be present at home with Abney and my family and to also be at NICU. So when I go to NICU, it's like the sweetest hello to my baby. And when it's time to leave, it's the most horrible goodbye. Um, because I don't know, I don't know what's going to change in the next hour, in the next, you know, overnight or in the, in the day. When I leave my house, it is the worst goodbye because I'm saying goodbye to my toddler. Um, and so she's so attached and she doesn't understand what's really going on. She wants to know where her baby is and it's a very, very overwhelming time. I do go to NICU. Occasionally I spend the night. I cannot do that all the time. And it's probably gonna get progressively more challenging for me. Um, when Ron returns to work because he does have to return to work at some point in time So as a NICU mom or a parent now, I want to say NICU mom because I'm a mom, a mom You're gonna feel very overwhelmed. You're gonna feel overwhelmed because For one you're gonna have to probably juggle Being in two places at I don't want to say at once because that's not really what it is But you're gonna have to juggle and manage time at your home and in NICU if you already have a child if you do not have a child, that becomes a little bit easier. You may also be overwhelmed by all of the medical terminology. I remembered before, way before I even had my delivery, the NICU doctor came in and um, had a conversation with me just in case there was a delivery. And it was just like medical terms being thrown at me. And, you know, I do have a science background. You know, I teach chemistry. I majored in, you know, I, I have a strong science background, y'all. Um... So I can only imagine for someone who doesn't have that background. I even um, did my internship in the hospital uh, for a short while, and that was way back when. So I do understand how things work, and I don't know everything, but I have a fairly good understanding of how things work. But that in itself can be very overwhelming. Um, the way I would get around that is to avoid Google. Google could be my death, personally. But instead, I would suggest that you develop a rapport with the nurses caring for your child and also the doctors. The doctors love structured questions, reflect on your questions, write your questions down and make sure you ask them the questions that you really want to be answered. And I do that a lot because I'm very structured. Um, 
I like concrete. I like data. I like stats. I like to know black and white. That's just me. Um, the second thing you're probably going to feel as a NICU parent is guilt. Um, that was something that was undeniable with me. I had so many questions. I was like, why me? Why does my pregnancy have to end so early? What is wrong with me? Um, I was not even fit to carry my own child full term because of the atypical um, preeclampsia. You you know, if you're a NICU mom, you're really going to feel that guilt and it's going to be very heavy for a while. So the way I work around that is through journaling. I journal a lot through my pregnancy. So I have two pregnancy books, one, one for Ebony, one for Amara. And I also do a lot of journaling now as a NICU mom. I got this really good book on Amazon. I'm going to put the link below. Um, it's just what I needed, but there are tons of books out there. Um, but I like this book because of how it, because of the layout of the book. Um, you can seek counseling. You can also talk to the people who know what what NICU life is about. And those would be your nurses and your doctors. And um, if anything else, I can suggest is to probably find a good distraction. So for me, it's listening to music, it's doing crafts with Ebony, arts and crafts, um, going for walks and things like that. Um, you may also be feeling a little bit of fear. Those would be your nurses and your doctors. And um, if anything else I can suggest is to probably find a good distraction. So for me, it's listening to music, it's doing crafts with Ebony, arts and crafts, um, going for walks and things like that. Um, you may also be feeling a little bit of fear. Um, I see a little bit and that is an understatement. Um, for me, I really have to juggle, you know, like managing my anxiety and not getting carried away because of my anxiety. Okay, so the fear could also be just not knowing what's going to happen. Um, life in Nikki can be very stressful. They can have one day of um, ups, great things, milestones, and then the same night or the next day, there could be a serious shift in progress. Um, things could spiral out of control. Well, not out of control, but things could spiral to the point where um, your baby is actually struggling a little bit more. Um, for me, my concerns are things like long-term medical issues, if there are going to be any issues at all. Um, what do I do after NICU? Am I going to be prepared enough to take care of a child at home? And for some people, there's also the worry of death. I mean, Amara was born at 29 weeks, but their baby's born sooner. And there's that fear, is my child going to make it? You know, and that makes it very, very stressful because you live every day, one day at a time, with just not knowing and you have to be so hopeful um, that things would just work in your favor and things will just work out, you know? So the way I try to deal with that and not get carried away with my fears is to simply call. I call Nikki all the time. You know, it's, there's something called touch time where they change diapers, uh, do their feeds and things like that. And I make sure I call like 40 minutes after touch time. And that is just to keep me in the loop of how did she do with her diaper change? How did she do with her feedings? And, you know, it helps me to process all that is going on. So I feel like just making that phone call, if you cannot physically be there at that time, will help appease some of that anxiety and fear and worry. Then you're, for the most part, going to feel powerless. Um, <laughs> when I say powerless, you know, you're basically placing your child's care in the presence of total strangers. You're going to eventually get to know them, but really and truly, there's so many caregivers rotating through NICU that sometimes there's a struggle to get to know everybody. But at some point in time, like I'm at this point right now where you'll start seeing familiar faces, you'll learn the names, you'll develop a rapport. Um, and the doctors, they're so great at calling in as well, just to check in on you and give you updates and things like that. Um, so that powerless feeling is knowing that, okay, as a parent, instinctively, you want to take care of your child. You want to protect your child, nurture your child, but you're unable to do that when that child is in an incubator or is in a crib in NICU. 
the way I'm kind of working through that is to do is to accept what I'm being offered. So a nurse might say, do you want to change a diaper? And I will say yes. The first time I said no. The second time I was like, you know what? Let me suck it up. I'm not a new mom. Let me try. Let me try because I have to know how to do this. So they'll ask you if you want to change a diaper. They'll ask you if you want a kangaroo um, care. That's where you go skin to skin and they're in your shirt or they put a little manky and they're on your chest. If you follow on Instagram, you would have seen pictures of that with me. The best thing ever. The most overwhelming feeling of joy um, every time I get to do skin to skin. Um, what else? Just just simple things like that. Just holding or reading. Uh, so you feel like you have a little bit more uh, control of what happens in NICU. Um, you can even go as far as personalizing your space. So for me, there's a little drawing of um, that Abney did of me and she and Amara, there is also a little stuffed toy that she wanted me to bring there and a little cute little chalk board that says, Amara, you are loved. And that's about it. You know, I don't want to overwhelm the space or anything like that, but you just want to put something in there to make it a little bit more familiar because Nikki was not home. You know, it's so unfamiliar. It's unfamiliar territory. You know, you have so many machines and all these beeping sounds. It can be very overwhelming, but... Um, just having um, some familiar things will make you feel a bit more at ease and like you're home. And then two last things. I kind of struggle with um, feeling disconnected for a while. When I was pregnant, I suffered with hyperemesis gravidarum and that made it very, very challenging for me to connect with the pregnancy. You know, you will hear mothers who struggle with HD say, I do not have to love my pregnancy to love my baby. You can love your baby, but you don't have to love your pregnancy. My journey this time around was very, very unpleasant, y'all. Um, I struggled. I became anemic. I lost a lot of weight, probably like 15 to 20 pounds. Um, I, I'm still small. You can see it, but I'm at a place where I've been eating well. Uh, obviously, I can't work out because I'm not cleared and cured and healed um, for any type of workouts, and I'm really taking it easy. Um... But that disconnect became progressively worse when my pregnancy was just ended very abruptly. And so um, after the delivery, I felt really compel compelled and pushed to start pumping. So I feel like I was doing something for my baby. Like that was a special thing for my baby. And then the last thing you're probably going to feel um, is a sense of sadness because, you know, you know when goes through pregnancy thinking I'm going to have a preterm baby. You go through pregnancy thinking I'm going to have a really good pregnancy. I'm going to eat well. Um, I will do my maternity shoot. I'm going to be the uh, most glamorous, cute, pregnant mama out there, that kind of thing. And sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. With Abney, I had all of that. With this pregnancy, I had a really big struggle and hurdle and a fight. Um, your sadness is normal. Um, you're kind of grieving what you wanted, especially if you had a birth plan. You're trying to overcome what you didn't have. I would say to give yourself grace. It's easier said than done. You're going to have a good day and then you're probably going to have two bad days. You're just going to cry probably for an entire day, even if you're having a good day. Um, so acknowledge what you're feeling, okay? Acknowledge what you're feeling. Like I'm... You know, I'm, like for me, I'm sad. I'm really mad sometimes. Just really pissed off. Um, uh, there are times that I'm really disappointed in myself. Times that I'm hopeful. You go through these emotions and that is perfectly perfectly fine. Acknowledge your feelings. That is part of healing. Um, extend grace to yourself. Okay? Give yourself time. Some people might be okay in a month or two. Others might be a year and others might take a lifetime. Give yourself time to get through that period of sadness and grief. And the biggest thing I can say here is to practice gratitude. And I got this from my mother. Um, my mother is truly my best friend. My mother is not just my mother. My mother is truly my best friend. I know for some people it's a sister or a spouse or whatever. My mother, there's no one like her. Um, she's the one person I can 
call and complain and cry to and not feel judged. And she will always have words of affirmation for me and always remind me that there is so much more to be thankful for. So whereas I was mourning my pregnancy and just a sudden end to it, she was like, you didn't have to be here. Your daughter didn't even have to make it, but you both are here. Be grateful. And that always helps. That perspective always helps. So practice gratitude. Now, um, that's it. That is all I have. If there are other emotions, I'm sure there are other emotions out there that I didn't mention, but that is just me and what I have been feeling. Who knows? Things might change next week or the week after that. I just want to come in here and share that with you and share some things that you can do as well to overcome all of those feelings. I really appreciate you listening to me and allowing me to be vulnerable. Not only this is for you, this is kind of like a time capsule as well. It's part of my memoir um, for my family and for my kids. And um, I just hope you guys find this um, helpful in some way. So until next time, peace.